The Ukrainian armed forces have officially announced the withdrawal of troops from Uglidar city in eastern Donetsk region amid Russian offensive. The higher command has given permission to carry out a maneuver to withdraw units from Uglidar in order to preserve personnel and combat equipment, to take a position for further actions, Operational Strategic Group of Troops, Kortitsa, announced in its Telegram channel on Tuesday. The group stressed that Russian attacks from the flanks depleted the defenses of the Ukrainian Armed Forces units. The battles for Uglidar continued for almost two years since the start of Russia's full-fledged invasion of Ukraine. The first Russian attempts to take the city in the fall and winter of 2022 involved large-scale attacks that resulted in massive losses of armored vehicles among Russian troops. However, in recent weeks, the Russian armed forces managed to encircle Uglidar from the flanks, create a threat to Ukrainian supply lines and enter the urban area. Earlier, Russian and Ukrainian telegram channels announced the transfer of Uglidar to the control of Russian forces. Videos circulated on telegram channels show Russian troops hanging their flag in the buildings in the city. Recently released drone footage captured by Ukraine's 72nd Mechanized Brigade shows destruction in the eastern Ukrainian town of Volodar. Ukrainian forces are under severe pressure in the town, one of a belt of strongholds in the Donetsk region which, along with Luhansk, makes up the partly occupied Donbass. Russian forces are obliterating Volodar with glide bombs, while infantry units advance on the flanks in a bid to encircle the town, according to Andriy Kovalenko, head of Ukraine Center for Combating Disinformation of the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine. A ceasefire in Ukraine could do more harm than good. Under current conditions, such a truce would only embolden Russian dictator Vladimir Putin, weaken Ukraine, and pave the way for more war. The West needs a better plan, writes Bloomberg. While the details of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's victory plan have not been revealed, its basic idea is clear. Only a strong Ukraine can force Putin to the negotiating table. The ceasefire poses significant risks for Ukraine. A pause in hostilities would give the Russian military a chance to rebuild its forces, replace losses, replenish weapons and correct tactical shortcomings. Putin would likely use the pause to prepare for new attacks, as he did after the 2014 invasion. The threat is heightened by the fact that a ceasefire could undermine international support for Ukraine. Western allies are already looking for an excuse to reduce financial aid and some, like Germany, are planning cuts in the next budget. A ceasefire could provide them with a conventional excuse. Putin is counting on the West growing tired of supporting Ukraine and his army continuing to receive funding to fight. A failed ceasefire could confirm these expectations and put Ukraine and its allies in a worse position when fighting resumes. Given this, the West should help Ukraine gain as much leverage as possible before starting any negotiations, Bloomberg notes. First, financial and military support for Ukraine must be maintained. Cutting aid now would only strengthen Putin's hand. Ukraine's air defenses must be strengthened, supplies of ammunition increased, and restrictions on the use of long-range missiles lifted. Only a coordinated effort of this magnitude can change Putin's calculations. Second, the Allies must develop credible security guarantees for Ukraine. This is no easy task, since NATO is not yet prepared to make direct commitments to the non-member state. However, there must be a collective promise, implicit or explicit, to protect the territories currently under Ukrainian control. 
During his bloody reign, Putin has always been willing to break ceasefires, violate agreements and break his word whenever he sees strategic advantage in doing so. There is every reason to believe that he will do the same this time. Without proper precautions, a ceasefire would not have ended the war, saved lives or benefited ordinary Ukrainians. It would have been the other way around. The publication concluded.